I live. Therefore, I make films. I make films. Therefore, I live. Light. Movement. I make home movies. Therefore, I live. I live. Therefore, I make home movies. I always have my camera with me, and I, I never knew, I never know when I will feel like, uh, yeah, this is, this is something when, uh, what I want to record for myself. And I don't know what I will do with, with, with it, or I will, or, uh, will I ever do anything with it. Maybe it will just sit on the shelf. I grew up on a, in a small farming uh, village north of Lithuania, on the border of Latvia, Lithuania. And uh, in a small village, when I say small, it was small. There were like 20 families. Uh, there was no electricity, no radios, no, no, of course, no television. And of course, water is from your own well. You know, water that tasted like wine almost. So that was, uh, I lived, I considered that I grew up in paradise. Then the Soviets came and they brought uh, hell. And my para paradise ended with the Soviet tanks rolling in. How was that period? That period was uh, my brother on my birthday decided to, to give us still, uh, bought my, gave me still camera as a present. And it happened so that like the same week that Russian tanks began rolling in along our road. That, ah, dusty road with tanks and army, what, you know, this is, I will take my first picture still with my still camera. What an occasion. I run to the road with, you know, with my little camera, snap. And the, the Russian, uh, some lieutenant, somebody runs to me, grabs the camera out of my hands, pulls out the film, rips out, throws it on the in the du road, dusty country road, uh, dust, and, and rubs in with his boot. So that was the beginning of, beginning of my film and photography career. My first image ended up in the, the Russian soldier's boot in the dust of my village. So that's part of my, where I come from. In the post-war, the uh, 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 displaced person camps in Germany, in Wiesbaden and Kassel, I had seen some films, mostly uh, uh, myself, my brother. We could see only what the American army went through the American army uh, and uh, they got uh, already, they saw it and they did not want to see them anymore. So they, they dropped into those camps. And those were really very bad third portrait uh, uh, movies. You couldn't see anything. But we saw, one day we saw the, the, the uh, Houston tre Treasures of Sierra Madre which already we thought, ah, oh, ah, oh, something, you could do something in cinema. But uh, it was not that serious unless, until we came to New York. This is the only uh, viewer in existence. There is no, they made this and they thought that people will be interested, filmmakers will be interested in it. Because, but nobody was interested, so they gave it to me. But it's very gentle to film, and you can see it projects. Uh, oh, it's upside down. Somebody, somebody in there. Maybe it's even me. United Nations refugee organization dropped us. Began uh, breaking up, uh, 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 getting rid of those camps and sending groups of people to Canada, Australia, and uh, I was lucky, we were lucky that they sent us to 
United States. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to go to Chicago, and, it, and there was a job for us in a bakery. So if we would, would have gone to Chicago, we would have become great bakers. Uh, but we, just, we saw New York, and we said, crazy, you go to Chicago, and we are in New York. You have to be crazy to, to go to Chicago. And you, you are dropped here where everything is available. It was like, uh, like uh, incredible. You, uh, uh, you could go and see everything, buy any book, go any movie, any... Uh, we could not... We, uh, and we were hungry, and uh, we were, uh, we came like empty sponges, ready to absorb anything that was there. And that's what we did. We had our bollocks, but, uh, uh, and we, we had no, uh, we still, in our heads, we, we still were uh, in the, that kind of mentality that cinema is Hollywood. Because that's all you know we had heard, until you know it took months, a uh, couple of years, when we really discovered that there, there is uh, uh, that the uh, cinema is not just Hollywood. Uh, there are different varieties. We began seeing already even the early American avant-garde. Uh, we uh, discovered very, uh, uh, film societies in New York that that uh, that cinema had other branches besides the Hollywood cinema. Uh, and, and that's where we began rethinking our, you know, uh, uh, what we really fit, what we really want to do. We, we thought, okay, we will be going, you know, uh, try to get into Hollywood and make our big uh, movies there, but meanwhile we have to practice and master the language of cinema, what the camera can do, all the tricks. So I kept, and uh, we kept filming, collecting some material, and time went, and then, uh, it's then that ye some years later, I began looking at the footage that I had collected during those early years. It's then that I realized that that footage was like, uh, keeping a diary because those uh, materials that uh, uh, I was filming was, uh, you know, from our real life. So I thought that's what I will do first and that's what I did. That's how Walden became my first like diary film. From there on, I did not throw out anything, and, and when, when I became aware, it has to be uh, personal and me, and it uh, and that uh, it has to be extension of my hand. That camera is extension, then becomes like a painter. Uh, the brush is extension uh, of uh, you know of your total you, what you are. Uh, it's not a. Uh, you don't think that now I have to move the brush right, now up, now down. No, no, it's all intuitive, it's all painter. Same with my filming. I have used up four Bolexes before I went to video. It's a, a deal because you have control frame, frame by frame. You can shoot frame by frame or run 24 frames per second or you can run like just maybe slow down to practically four or five frames per second and, and, and turn wind back and double expose and uh, it's uh, it's very precise it's it's that's why i used bolex lost 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 it begins really when we just arrived in new york so it goes through a good 15 years uh, period 
And during that period, I was working on myself and changing and uh, 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 there are different periods of my uh, life, uh, uh, work and uh, thinking. And ends already when uh, I have uh, uh, already a, like a new family with new friends, uh, 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 with a new set of memories and uh, uh, the film ends already, I am completely somewhere else. Uh, uh, and uh, I have like escaped uh, 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 the wartime, post-war memories, depressions that I somehow managed to put myself, all those 1,000 pieces together. That's where the film ends. Uh, so you can call it, uh, you know, but the, just at the gates of paradise. Maybe not in paradise, but somewhere by the gates, at, <laughs> close to the gates of paradise. Tell where you have been. Tell what you have seen. And tell a story of a man who never wanted to leave his home. As we were moving towards the 60s, we, we thought that we should get to the, uh, uh, together and uh, maybe when, if we uh, act as a group, then, then maybe it will be easier to finance our films. Uh, one thing that came out of it was film creation of film makers cooperative so that we created our own distribution center where we had complete control uh, 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 and we we could distribute make available whatever we wanted while all the other established uh, film distributors did not take our films seriously they did not want to distribute them uh, so we said, why don't we create our own cooperative kind of distribution center? And that's what we did. There were Shirley Clark, Lionel Robinson, Robert Frank, uh, Leslie, Emil D'Antonio, uh, about 20, 20 of us. It showed that you can make a film almost, you know, we did not read, need a lot of money to make a film. And it um, was created at uh, my loft, which was uh, 414 Park Avenue South. So that filmmakers cooperative, my loft became hangout, uh, uh, not only during the day, but also in the evenings of, uh, of uh, 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 filmmakers, uh, artists, poets uh, uh, of any kind. It was a very busy place. And there, the filmmakers used to bring their films that they shot like a day before to show to each other. And uh, 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 almost every evening something was going there. And uh, 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 so one of the people, and I did not know, and I discovered like a month or two later, uh, was Andy Warhol. Um, I, I did not know him at all. There were people sitting, there were no chairs, people sitting on the floor, and he was there on the floor like everybody else. Uh, so, but then somebody said, you don't know Andy Warhol, he has been you know, in your loft you know, for months, and you don't know him. I said, I don't know him. So I was introduced to him, and that's how we met. And sometimes I filmed, you know, here in the studio or, or later uh, in, uh, uh, when he bought some land uh, in Long Island and he spent, he spent some week, many, during the summer, many weekends he spent uh, in Long Island. So I used to go there sometimes to stay also for 
for a week or two, and so I filmed him there, and through the years, and and then uh, 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 I didn't, you know, just footage. It's a person, a more a personal the way, sort of when he was not surrounded by any of the when he was usual just himself. So I strung it together, all those pieces together, and that was how the scenes from the life of Andy Warhol came into existence. Otherwise it would be still in pieces. Chance has its own logic. Chance maybe improvisation has stronger logic than anything that you could uh, invent uh, by your mind artificially, because it's out of your control. It, it works uh, according to its own laws. Uh, and you just do it, you just follow it uh, 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 without thinking. You know, I'm, I never think. Film, tape, uh, I'm just totally with it, with what's happening there. And chance uh, is all a part of it. Sometimes what you control and you impose, it it's, uh, uh, has nothing to do what, with the essence of what's really happening there. But if you are totally open and give yourself up to it, just to camera and what's there, submerge with it and you just follow, then you catch something that is something that is what's happening in the situation. I mean, there is a certain selectivity of what I am attracted to, to, to film, to record, to tape, uh, that I am not attracted to, uh, to anything that one could uh, vaguely and maybe um, superficially refer as ugly or horrible or, uh, or uh, evil. <laughs> I use any of those words. Uh, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm more attracted to those situations, uh, images, uh, which again superficially one would describe as more uh, happy uh, uh, events, hap happy situations. Uh, I grew up, grew, grew up in a happy sort of uh, uh, family, uh, that of course has an effect on me. But then, uh, you know, after you go through again what I went through later, through t 10 years of hell, uh, uh, then again I don't want to, to, why should I represent and show in my movies any of the hell uh, uh, which we see already in life. Uh, there is so much uh, of it going uh, 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 everywhere these days that I, uh, uh, I want people, people, give people that if you, something that you spend time with it, looking at it, it makes you, it, you know, uh, uh, it does something to you that is pleasant, not, not uh, displeasant, uh, or something that upsets you and you have bad dreams. Uh, and which uh, most of what, if you watch television, you go through various channels for one hour and I bet you will have bad, horrible dreams that night. So that's, uh, I don't want that. Then as a whole, you're an escapist. No, or you can call it me a moralist. Filming a, somebody who is wrapping a present for somebody. It's very simple. You buy something and you, it's somebody's birthday, you want to give and you get and you're wrapping. But you see, when you do that, the act of wrapping a present for a friend or unwrapping a present that you received from a friend is a, is, is a ritual, is a certain in their intensity of feeling this moment is a in a small way, is a unique uh, moment 
and you do it in a certain very special way. Now to catch what there is in that moment, that's what I'm interested in. That's what the challenge is, because that's the most difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm.